500 miles off West Africa's coast lies the island nation of Cape Verde, and in this video we will explore its cultural capital Mindelo, one of the most beautiful cities you have never seen. Our journey starts in Cape Verde's tourism hub, the island of Sal. After my catastrophic experience with the inter-island ferry boat service, I have decided to travel by plane for the rest of my time in the country. Cape Verde's domestic airports are remarkably easy to use. The plane ticket to Mindelo only costs $90 for around an hour of flying, while a $50 ferry trip could easily last more than 15 hours including delays. Within less than an hour of arriving at the airport, we are checked in and ready to board. Shortly afterwards, we arrive at Cesarea Evora International Airport in Sao Vicente Island. I grab a taxi and we head over to the city center. I stop at a boutique hotel on Rua de Mudua in the middle of downtown. It only costs $50 per night. With around 70,000 inhabitants, Mindelo is Cape Verde's second largest city, behind Praia, but it is by far the most impressive. While Praia has one particularly nice historical district called Plato, almost the entire city of Mindelo is built in the Portuguese colonial style. 
The Grand Sobrato Homes are a testament to the wealth and importance this relatively obscure city once had. Throughout their history, the Cabo Verde Islands have experienced many short-lived economic booms that catapulted them from poverty into extreme wealth and then back into poverty. Santiago Island got rich during the transatlantic slave trade. Sal and Boa Vista made their fortunes with salt. But Sal Vicente got its big break in the mid-19th century when the British began using its capital Mandelo as a coaling station to refuel their vessels traveling across the Atlantic. Eventually, Portugal's high taxes and trademark colonial ineptitude caused vessels to go elsewhere, and by the mid-20th century, the industry that made this city rich disappeared as bunker oil replaced coal. Although Mindelo is in West Africa, it is very obviously a European city, just like Las Palmas in the Canary Islands or Funchal, Madeira. The 18th century buildings have been preserved, and the city planning is extremely dense and walkable. By contrast, other West African countries like Nigeria or Ghana have adopted the car-dependent urban layouts more typically found in North America.
The pink building in the distance is the Palacio do Povo, or People's Palace. It was built in 1874 when there were plans to move Cape Verde's capital from Praia to Mindelo. It now serves as a museum. While little known outside the country, Cape Verde has two ethno-linguistic groups, the Baju, who live in Santiago, and the Sampajuru, who live here in Sao Vicente and its neighboring islands of Sao Nicolau and Santo Antão. Their European ancestry is overwhelmingly Portuguese, with smaller elements of other groups, including Jewish slave traders called the Lansados, expelled from Iberia during the Inquisition. The meaning of Sampa Judo is unclear, but it sounds similar to the Portuguese word sempre a judo, which put together would mean something like always helping or ready to help. During the colonial period, Cape Verdean Creoles certainly lived up to this name, serving as colonial administrators and bureaucrats all over the Portuguese Empire in Africa, from Guinea-Bissau to Mozambique. In the past, mixed-race Lusophone Africans may have simply identified as Portuguese, and that is often how they were perceived by native Africans on the mainland. But over time, evolving racial politics forced mixed-race people into a more Creole identity instead of a strictly European one. It is interesting how the trees are allowed to grow basically inside the road. The people seem to have great respect for vegetation in this harsh desert climate. Thank <laughs> you. 
excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Deu-me diferença, deu-me diferença. Now we come across the Rua Pedonal or Walking Street. This area is very popular with tourists. Europeans tell me it's a great place to get ice cream. Wide angle, but apparently not wide enough. Now we come to the waterfront district of Mandelo. This is where you'll find the highest end restaurants and hotels, such as the Mansa Marina. Surprisingly, all these places are quite affordable by American standards, with the Mansa costing just $100 per night. 
That's probably the most expensive hotel in the entire city. Now, we enter some of the oldest streets in the city. This is the original Mandela. Next, let's take a look at the market. Cape Verde's African heritage shows the most in female-oriented spaces like markets. It is not uncommon to see women carrying baskets on their heads and babies on their backs, just like on the mainland. Perhaps it isn't surprising, considering the Creole people got almost all of their African DNA from the maternal line. These quirks were likely passed down from mother to daughter across generations. Thank <laughs> you. 